Hi, this is Nancy Herald, and welcome to my show, High Road to Humanity. In every episode, I tell you powerful true stories filled with great wisdom that you can use in your own life as you strive for a higher road to travel. My featured guests will have their own unique stories to tell that enlighten your mind and your soul. So kick back, relax, and learn the secret to success when you take the high road. First touch, strong connection, it lays deep in your soul. Hi, this is Nancy Yearout, and welcome to High Road to Humanity. And I have a really special guest today. Today, we have Alan Steinfeld here. And here's his book, you guys. It's called Making Contact. And we're going to talk about the extraterrestrials today. Some people call them galactics. And so this is going to be a really fun show. So make sure you share it with your friends. Now, before I bring him on, I was checking out what was happening in humanity today, you guys. And look what I pulled up. So here we go. U.S. UFO report boldly goes where no one has gone before. A task force will share data it collected on unusual flight phenomena with Congress as UFO enthusiasts rejoice. But a German expert with decades of research under his belt doesn't believe aliens have ever been to Earth. I just love that part. Mm. Uh, so it goes on. This Where is was that from? Where was that report from? Okay, so this one came in. And I want to say it was the New York Times today that Maybe this one came was. from. Yeah, and, and it's really long. It's quite lengthy. It says U.S. UFO boldly uh, goes where no one has gone before. And it says the military officials and researchers who don't want to be associated with the expression UFOs use when talking about objects in the sky that fly without any visible form of propulsion. It patterns that defy our knowledge of physics. So yes. The U.S. Department of Defense will tell U.S. representatives and senators what they've learned about un unidentified flying objects and U.S. airspace. And the public is going to hear all about it. Well, it's about flipping time, you think? So this goes on, you guys. This is a huge article. You can pull it up. I pulled this up online. I won't take a ton of time, but man, it's out. They have uh, pictures. Okay, so it's all coming out. Here we are. So it's perfect time for this book, Alan. And the funniest thing that I pulled up that I have to, I started to laugh about. Are you ready for this? So here we go. Everybody's got get, has to get on the bandwagon. Oreo turns cookie packs into extraterrestrial peace offering ahead of congressional UFO report. It says Oreo created a limited edition cookie packs as a peace offering. For potential extraterrestrial visitors, according to details shared with Marketing Dive, the offering product encourages consumers to place an Oreo at the center of the uh, at the center of the pack, marked by an electric blue elaborate. It looks like glyph-like cookie design with a clear view of the sky. This is, it's really going to get interesting now. I can hardly wait. Hey, so Ellen, wait, Oreo I'm, cookies are making a special UFO Oreo? Is yes, that they what you're are, saying? They are, they are. It says, Oreo published a series of social videos around the product drop while conducting Twitter polls to gauge the best snacks to share with the alien life forms. Wow. That yeah. My book. I'm telling you, oh man, you were right on the money here. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about Alan. Alan is an explorer of consciousness, and for over 30 years, he's hosted and produced the weekly television series, New Realities in New York City. Additionally, with 68,000 subscribers to his YouTube channel, uh, there's been over 20 million views uh, who have seen his program. Uh, they include interviews with luminarias in the field of health, spirituality, UFOs, such as uh, Deepa Chakra, Marianne Williams, Ram Das, and every major UFO research in the field. Hey, Alan, welcome to High Road to Humanity. Thank you, Nancy. Great. I love your enthusiasm because- Oh, I'm just really excited that you're here. This is oh, awesome, thanks. man. Thanks. So well, I want to know, and the audience wants to know, what's your story? How'd you get into this? Well- I think everyone's born curious. I mean, I was always curious about the stars. I mean, I remember seven years old, uh, I think, you know, because I lived sort of in the suburbs, we didn't really see stars. But when I finally did see some stars, it's like, what is that? What's out there? <laughs> and no one seemed to really care. No yeah. one seemed to want to know. No one seemed curious. Like, 
why is the moon so big on certain days? It's like, you know, like a six or seven year old mind, like wondering about the world, but the, the bigger world and all the adults were not interested. I could not understand that. That curiosity has stayed with me. Mm -hmm. I was a big fan of Star Trek in the, uh, the original series in the 60s. It's like I would not miss an episode. It's, it just seemed to like open my mind. It was like food. Mm -hmm food for thought and creativity and wonder and possibilities. So I, I always felt different, I have to say, than the rest of my family and even my friends, you know, and mm -hmm. I always knew there would, had to be more to reality. And so right. Right. I started the program called New Realities when I uh, moved to New York and uh, been doing that ever since, actually, in New York City. So you started interviewing people so you could find out more information. Exactly. I, yeah, I, um, it's not about me, my interview shows. It's right. like, what can you tell me? And yes. I, I've looked for the best people I could find people like Bruce Lipton, you know, do you know Bruce Lipton? I've heard the name. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Joe Dispenza has been in my, and Deepak Chopra, who's really yeah. brilliant and Marion mm -hmm. Williams and all those people that were coming up with new ideas, new ways of leadership and, mm -hmm. and possibilities. I love scientists like Nassim Harmin, who, who devised the idea that there's black holes in the center of every galaxy, every sun. I, I, these are people changing the ideas of science and physics and art. People like Alex Gray have been, become my good friends. You know Alex Gray's art with the multi-dimensional overlays of yeah. people and beings. So there's people doing new things. There always have been. Mm -hmm. And the artists, which um, my next book is about UFOs and art. Oh, cool. um, it's like, I'm looking for the unknown, the new, the impossible, the, the, so I I'm, I'm doing that. And the UFO field, whatever these things are, that holds the most interesting avenues into something we don't know. Right. So that's um, my fascination. Yeah, I think it's fascinating. You interviewed, and I'll just tell the audience about a little bit about the book. Yeah. You guys, uh, he has several different people in here that tell their stories and their view. And it's really quite interesting as I read uh, through the different people's analogy of what they thought and how they looked at it. Um, you know, they all have some things in common, uh, but there are things that are not in common. Um, you know, they each have a different take on it, I guess. Right. Well, you know, I had to write a book that was uh, because we don't really know what this thing is and right. everyone has their own point of view and yeah. I certainly don't know it all. I felt a book like this that talked about many different perspectives. So there's 11 different essays in here or mm -hmm. contributions really because and they're they're sort of standalone essays, but they're also progressive. Did you notice that? Yeah. We go from the exterior, what the government knows, nuts and bolts to like how this is affecting people and transforming consciousness. So right. I figured the only way to really understand or attempt to understand this phenomena is put all these people with these different views together in one place and let the reader decide for themselves mm -hmm. what's really going on. Because I, I think that's the government's hesitation here. They don't want to say, look, we don't know what this is. They, 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 that, that. Yeah. And I don't, and I think they do know what this is. And okay. a lot of people, yes. And a lot of people in here, and we'll talk about that today. And I just want to say that really quick. I took a lot of quotes from your book and it says, if somebody sees a UFO, it's not by chance. Every sighting and contact experience is intentionally planned. Yeah. That's Grant Cameron who wrote the book, second chapter called the theory of wow. And he yeah. says, there's an entanglement property that happens. If you see a UFO, they are seeing you mm -hmm. and there's a consciousness link. So anyone who sees a UFO, you are making this link to whatever these beings, it's not the UFO, it's like who's behind the UFO. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're part of the story. And, and you know, there's, I think they did a survey. I think like 25% of the American population either has seen a UFO or knows someone who's seen. A right, UFO. right. So um, this is something we have to start to understand. And are we connected to the rest of the cosmos? I think we are. I think we're not isolated. And certainly life is not a freak of nature you know mm -hmm. life i feel is an abundant property throughout the universe throughout creation throughout the multiverse 
And I think it's conscious. I think it's conscious life. I do too. I think the big question is, do is consciousness an evolutionary um, factor of the body or is it a de-evolution of some higher realms descending into the body? Mm. I don't, I don't have the answer, but if you look at yeah. near death, near death experiences, all that something yeah. it exists. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll throw my two cents in there. Honestly. Yeah, please. Yeah. Please. Cause um, you're a psychic, I, right? Yes, yeah. I, and I work with the angelic realm. I work with higher vibrations and um, I, I am connected to God. I'm connected to the divine. And that is where my information comes from. And once you're connected, this is a awakening. This is a time for us to wake up. And that's why I'm so glad you're bringing this out because we do have extraterrestrials, you guys, who live on earth underground. And we'll talk about that on the show today. Yes. We have been kept silenced in the dark per se. And now that people are starting to wake up, uh, and I can speak for myself and a lot of people I've had on the show, um, Alan, that when you're connected to the divine, you start to pay attention and you start to wake up and you realize and you see things differently. So yes, I believe um, when you're connected to God, your consciousness can be raised and and you can be absorbed. My, my thing is you can live with the divine if right. you do proper on earth. Right. And that's the big question. Um, yes. Yes. Are we descending from the divine realm yes. or yes. are we evolving towards the, I, I mean, I, I agree with you. There's something yeah. divine about us. There's something right. divine about human consciousness. So that is not just confined to this little small blue dot in the infinity of space, that divine right. Right. aspect. It's right. everywhere. It and is. In, it and is. it's in life forms everywhere. And that's why I don't think these UFOs, whatever they are, are coming here to invade us. They're actually here to help us move more towards this other level of mind, of, di of divinity. And yeah. that's part of it too. Yeah. So we'll talk about it more when we come back. Hey, you guys, I'm here today with Alan Steinfeld. His book is Making Contact. Alan, I'm sure they can pick this up on Amazon, right? Definitely buy it on Amazon or go into your bookstore and ask for it if people are All right. going yeah. to bookstores. That's yes. right. I go to the bookstore. Oh, good. Go to the okay. bookstores and ask for it. Okay. This is Nancy Yearout. This is High Road to Humanity, and we will be right back. Yes. That yes. is good. That is good. This is Nancy Yearout. This is High Road to Humanity, and I'm back here with Alan Steinfeld. Alan, we've got lots to talk about today because you and I, God, I could probably talk to you for hours. Um, you know, different people talk about different things. Um, they talk about different abductions in the book. You know, we were talking about there's different types of um, aliens that are here. I don't know what they like to be called. There's the grays, there's the reptilians, and then there's the, uh, the blonde tall ones from the Arctic. And so, like you were saying before, some of these guys are here to help us, but some of them are not. So some of them have been connected with, and, and I've had Gene Decode on the show, and I don't know if you're familiar with Gene, but he's a retired uh, colonel and he had a near-death experience and he can see uh, timelines and he can see multiple timelines. And so he talked to me about a lot of these guys coming in and some of them work with us like the greys, but some of like the reptilians, some of them just want to take from us. What do you know? Well, I think you can say greys and reptilians, but I think within that there's many different species within those races of oh. alien types. So okay. it's not like, all well, I, I haven't. That's not my experience, but some people have said not all reptilians are bad, not all okay. grays. You know, there's evolutions to each of these species, and there's probably more than three. There's probably hundreds that have come and gone. Some say the Anunnaki, you know, mm -hmm. uh, have, have actually evolved us. I think we are part alien, I think that's really in our genetics. We are different than all the animals here, so. We are of the stars. We really are. We're not, yes, we're divine, but the evolutionary process of our bodies have been upgraded dramatically by, by beings that have taken the primates. Well, and, yeah, and, and you know, I'm going to yeah. differ with, with you a little bit on that one. Yeah, I yeah. think, okay, I'll tell you my opinion on tell this. Tell me. Um, well, I think that they have messed with our genetic code. I yeah. think that we came from the divine and we're here. And I know um, from what I can understand or what I think is that God lets people come to and fro and do their thing. And um, it's all about choices. And what we do down here, and this is what I think, I think um, 
they may have altered us or tried to alter us, but I don't think it's for the positive. I think there's a, a negative and a positive. I think there's some people that would like to see us evolve and do well and raise our vibration, which we will. Yeah. And then I see other people who say, oh no, let's take from them. What can we get from them? How come? I think they see us when we die. You see, we go to the divine. We have a silver cord that's attached. Yes. And see, they're trying to figure out, this is what I got from your book that I thought was so cool, is that they're trying to figure out how we do that. Like, But they haven't figured out that what they do in life matters because if you do well, you go back up. Yeah, uh, there's that karmic uh, chord. I do think there's many levels of, I think, yes, we were created in divine form. And I think we've also been upgraded. I also think there's other species that have put a grid of limitation mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. our brains and the mind have kept us trapped in things like addiction and, and emotionality and dramas and this whole thing that have kept us very isolated and very small minded. And that's that's an effect of what some people have called the archons. The archons are mm. a race of beings that have that feed off our emotions, that feed off our dramas, that have taken yeah. over our minds. And that has kept us in a very limited way. So there's this back and forth of mm -hmm. between those that want to help us lift up and those that want to keep us down because they get something from that. Mm -hmm. But we're at a turning point mm -hmm. in history Yay. where we're waking up to the divine, waking up to non-local consciousness. When I say non-local, it means like what you're thinking, what I'm thinking is not being generated from the brain. It's being received by the brain from who we are in the divine field. There's a divine field out there and our brains are receivers like radios that are mm -hmm. picking up our individual frequencies, mm -hmm. right? So we can fine tune it to another level right. of who we really are yes. and reach more towards the divine when we yep. drop. But the human dramas keep us trapped. Who, what's my relationship like? You know, who likes me? Who doesn't? You know, all these things yeah. have kept us in a low right. vibration. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I think the COVID has yes. been a way to make us sit still, realize yes. what's important, connect with the divine, realize that all the material stuff really doesn't matter. Right. Because when you do connect to God, and I will tell you this, and I can tell you this only from my own experience, your life changes. You look at things differently. Absolutely. I look at things from a, a wider perspective. I, you know what I mean? You don't yes. look at the little, the little back and forth. You, that's that's nothing. what the ETs are waking us up to, whether they're doing yeah. is the bigger perspective. They're, yes. We're part of a bigger cosmos. We're not separate from all of creation. We're a part of creation. Mm -hmm. And this interchange with these beings is about realizing who we are. Right. We are of the cosmos. We are of, let's call it the divine field. We're of something greater, we but are. no one has ever told us that. Religion may be, but religion also has a lot of its dogma and rituals and mm -hmm. fundamentalism. We have to discover the divinity within each of us, within ourselves, right. and realize that we're part of this greater this greater possibility. We're waking up as a human race to who we really yeah, are. And I think it's fantastic. And I'm glad that I'm alive right now. And I'm glad that I'm able to talk about it and help people and let people see, you know, there are a lot of, um, and I don't want to get into the whole thing, but there's a lot of the families here that have been here that keep reincarnating and mm -hmm. keep uh, that are connected with a lot of these aliens who, uh, you know, have benefited from. Yeah, no, uh, I agree with you yeah, completely. And it's, yeah, and it's time. It's time. It's time we realize who we really are. And yeah. that's, that's what these, this new wave, there really is a new wave of sightings that are happening around the country. The government yeah. is cracking its grass, glass ceilings on secrecy. I mean, there's factions in the government that want to keep this suppressed because they don't want us to wake up because of what you're saying. These, oh, yeah. these families that want to keep control of the earth or of the, the oil companies. So we, and I think thanks a lot to the internet that has a, have a lot more access to information. Right. It's, I mean, it's good and bad, the internet. There's a lot of junk and awful things out there, but it's also a tool for awakening, if we use it that way, what else can I learn? And just tapping into yourself when you go out into the nature, into nature, 
and you're just still, there's mm-hmm. a part of our minds that open up yeah. to new possibilities. That is the secret to evolution, listening to your own consciousness. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here. We're here to turn off the television, the radio, all that, and drop into this this antenna of of greater mind that's Mm -hmm. sitting right here waiting for us to just tune in. Right. And and that's that's what this we're about to wake up to a greater universe that we're a part of. And I think Yes, there are beings that aren't very nice out there. They want to keep us suppressed. But the ones that I think are coming now are saying, you know, it's time, folks. You've been children long enough. You have to let drop your weapons, your nuclear Mm -hmm. um, arsenal, all that, all that stuff that is about against each other and realize that we are one Mm -hmm. being. We are one giant family of um of consciousness. We're all connected. Me and you, Nancy, are connected. I know. I know. It's awesome. It's awesome. And, and once you go out in nature, I love that you said that because it's mm-hmm. true. When you go out in nature and everybody needs to do it, you know, and just sit and just be quiet and relax and still your mind. When you do that, you get messages from the divine. Yes. It connects you. More I just want to say more that. Because the veil between the dimensions is getting thinner. So right. more and more people are psychic, more people are seeing UFOs, more people are having out-of-body experiences. The, the, there's been a, a suppression of thought here for mm-hmm. thousands of years. Mm-hmm. And that's somehow, for some reason, maybe it's the acceleration of the vibration of the earth itself is changing. We are reaching higher states of consciousness. It's time. And this is our destiny. Yeah, yeah. So. It's a real exciting time to be alive. It really is. It's it all going to change now. Everything changes in this, in this, maybe this year, this moment, this, yeah. this decade, yeah. the world as we knew it will not, will no longer exist. We'll never be the same. God, I got chills on that one. That's yeah. wild. Yeah. Um, you know, well, there's so. If you I, open just the inside of the book, can you just open sure, that yeah. inside the cover and yeah. read that Oh, part? it's really what cool. It, say? it says. Take a peek into forever where the spirit of adventure can transcend the boundaries of belief and reveal the unknown. It awaits your discovery. That's my invitation to the reader. It Mm -hmm. is. We are about to look into forever, which is Mm -hmm. the eternity of the stars, of the sky, of the cosmos. We're about to create a new cosmology. So... Everything that's gone before has just gotten us to this level, to an even playing field. This is where we are supposed to have incarnated to this place of free energy. At this Um, time. Yes. I'm going to read a a little bit from your book, A Place That I Marked. And he says in the beginning, and I like this, he said, this is a book by and about people with a passion to take us beyond the confining ideas of a universe devoid of life. Their mission is is the push for an expanded recognition of life on, above, and beyond the earth because they instinctively instinctively know that to dare is the highest wisdom. Yes. Very nice. This, this was well what, written, by the way. Really well written. Oh, I want to say that. Yes, I, you guys, it's fun to read. I mean, it's there's stories in here. I mean, I love it. People being taken up and all that good yes. stuff. You know, we got to go to commercial break. When we come back, maybe you'll tell us some stories. Would you do that? Yes, I will. Cool. I will. All right, you guys. Thank I'm here today with Alan Steinfeld. His book, Preparing for the New Realities of Extraterrestrial Existence, Making Contact. This is Nancy Earout. This is High Rich Humanity, and we will be right back. Hi, this is Nancy Earout, and this is High Rich Humanity. I'm back here with Alan Steinfeld. Alan, man, there were so many stories in here. I... Now, didn't you have, uh, uh, you know, some kind of, you know, meeting with the aliens? Can you talk about that? Would you mind yeah. telling the audience? Yeah, I mean, it's sort of typical now, you know, what people have said about alien abductions, if they really are abductions. Some people say we make an agreement for this to happen on another level, but um, mm-hmm. who knows? I don't know. But I was driving cross country with this girlfriend and we were driving all day, you know, really tired and uh It was somewhere in, we were driving from West Coast to the East Coast and somewhere in Nebraska, Western Nebraska, like uh, I think it was near North Platte, Nebraska in that area. Do you know that area? I think it's Wyoming, Nebraska border out there. Anyway, it's sort of deserted out there. And um, we just pulled off the interstate into this little kind of um, 
dirt road and we just parked there. It's, it, there was a sign that said, enter at your own risk. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think that was because it was near an irrigation canal. Oh, okay. Region. Okay. But it was a little ominous, right? So um, <laughs> we just pass out. I mean, we're just really tired because, you know, uh, and then we feel like we wake up in the morning, but we're in the same position we went to bed in. It's like, who even remembers that? It felt like we were frozen or in suspended animation through throughout the night, although I didn't really think, I mean, it felt a little weird, but it's like, mm -hmm. you know, we just wanted to get out of there and keep going. And, and did she say anything? She said, yes, it felt weird. But I mean, years later, we had talked about this because we weren't together anymore, but we're friends, you know, I'd call her. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this was like 30 years ago, but you know, right. you never forget some moments. And I said to her, actually recently after not talking to her for, for I don't know, 10 years, I said, you remember that time in Nebraska? She said, yeah, when we were frozen. And um, <laughs> so anyway, I get back to New York and I find this little mark on the back of my leg, this little four prong puncture mark. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was not quite into the UFO field, but I was doing some videos. I was doing a video for a dancer who was a choreographing her abductions just coincidentally. And I talked to her, I said, what do you think about this little four prong mark on the back of my knee? For some reason it was on the back of my knee. I don't know why. She said that, yes, that is an abduction. <laughs> Mark, I said, really? I mean, I kind of went into a little panic because it's like, yeah. I think there's something traumatizing about meeting these beings, not because they're bad or evil, at least the ones I met, just because they're so different than us. Yeah, they look different than us. They yeah. look different, but they feel different than us. You know, you're a human being. I mean, I can see, I can relate to you. When you meet something you can't relate to mm -hmm. and, their, and their frequency is different, there's something like traumatizing or, or panicking about even if you read people you ever meet people who are like devoid of emotion yeah sort of like empty maybe because of their trauma yeah. there's something alarming just about meeting those other and those are just humans when well, you it's meet energy it's energy i'm going to stop you a second yes, because it's i'm an empath energy. yeah i'm an empath and so when i meet pe somebody and their energy is kind of bad i just back off because I pick up on the energy of people. So I know exactly what you're talking about. But what if the energy is not bad or good, but something totally unfamiliar? Um, yeah. Something you have not ever felt before. Mm -hmm. It's even weirder. It's like, right. you don't know what to do with that. Like if I compare it, like when I teach about new reality, if you have never seen an elephant, what is that creature? If no mm -hmm. one ever told you such a thing, it would sort of freak you out when you see right. these things and feel their vibration. Not that elephants are bad. I think they're good. But when right. you meet beings that, and I think their, their consciousness is set by the frequency of the sun that they emanate from. I think our sun produces a uniformity of frequency. Mm -hmm. But if you're from another sun, you're mm -hmm. vibrating in a different field. Frequency? Yes, frequency and field, a bigger field of energy that it's disturbing to us because it's like trying to get like Wi-Fi on a uh, radio. It, and it, it doesn't it, mesh. It doesn't mesh at all. So okay. that's the trauma in meeting these beings. That's why we block out. This is my theory. Interesting. That's why we have to maintain a lucid practice. That means we have to be more aware in these altered states, in our dream states, in our alpha and theta states. If we can maintain mm -hmm. a lucid awareness of other states of consciousness, we'll be able to meet these beings on an even playing field. But right now, for most people, they, we go unconscious. Even the most experienced contactee cannot maintain the sense of self within the face of these other creatures. Yeah, they're on a different, they're on a different, they have a different energy. I agree right. with that wholeheartedly. I really yeah. do. And, um, and I, I do. I believe that. That's but I also, the problem that the government has with telling us what's here. But you, what were you going to say? You also what? Think well, no, I'm, I'm thinking about um, a lot of the different things that, that I read in the book. And um, they say that, you know, we couldn't under, there was somebody wrote something that said we couldn't, uh, 
you know, they, they, they contact us tele uh, with telepathy, but, and we will get to that point. So I, as I think about this, I think we'll raise our consciousness. And I think that's what you mean as our consciousness raises, and then we're able to speak to each other telepathically. We'll yes. be able to speak with them telepathically because that's how they communicate with us. Yes. They yes. don't yes. communicate any other way. And that makes a whole lot of sense. I, I also wanted to bring up um, you know, in the Bible, uh, somebody wrote, and I thought this was interesting. In the last days, people will have new bodies, indestructible bodies. There'll be new beings. I think it's all inside of us. It's all here, this package. I think the mind of us uh, is, the mind is the key. So what do you think about that? Do you think that they'll try to re, you know, restructure us? They, you mean the aliens? will? Yeah, yeah. Them? You know, there's so many different levels of aliens. I think we are here to be restructured ourselves. We are here to wake up to the greater gifts, the divine gifts of we, you know, telepathy is a divine gift, remote mm -hmm. viewing, non local consciousness. These are the gifts that we are here to exercise. You know, mm -hmm. when you can use your remote viewing or your non local sensing to see anywhere on the planet to know anything that's happening to to know the greater mind then you're evo then we're evolving to this bigger expanded consciousness this is and we've done lesson. that we've done that i mean psychics have remote viewed for the government for years yes, yes. For and years. more and more people are realizing that the localized consciousness is an illusion that we are part of everything all of us know everything about everything mm -hmm. all the time we just have to get out of the way Mm -hmm. And what's in the way is the monkey mind. It's the mm -hmm. linear, it's the personality, you know, mm -hmm. I think I'm this person, but we're never the identity. When we transcend our identity, when we start to become more telepathic, more non-local, more aware, like you said, we go to nature and you start to just download mm -hmm. these messages. Well, we need to sit with ourselves so we can start to sit with other beings and start to but, and we have to believe in ourselves. I think mm -hmm. psychology is great. It's, it's done as a service, but it's done as a disservice in doubting our own minds. Well, like, doubting yeah. our own power. I just want to say this really quick. As you're talking about this, we are really powerful. Mm -hmm. That, And I think that they didn't want us to know how powerful we are. This is what I really believe. I'll just tell you this really quick. Right. Right. I think we are way more powerful than we give ourselves credit for. Absolutely. If I'm able to connect to the divine and know information and change the way I think, like when I look at you, I don't look at you. I look at your soul. I don't look at you like Alan. I mean, I do, but I don't, if that makes sense. The totally eyes, sense. I look at the eyes, the eyes are the window to the soul. So that's what I start to see. And I think that's what we're getting to, where we look at each other, not black, white, red, whatever you are, but the soul, because that's who we really are. And we have this power. We have this energy that we are learning how to use, in my opinion. Right. So that we, that's what I think, Alan. What well, do you no, think? I totally agree with you. And the soul is yeah. infinite. It is yeah. not limited to this body or this planet. Correct. I think we've incarnated on many, many worlds mm -hmm. and many times. Mm -hmm. And partly what we bring here to humans is part of what those other worlds are like. Let's say you have a special gift or a special talent. Mm -hmm. It's because you've incarnated many many times and the soul retains that information when you're seeing the soul you're seeing the wisdom of experience that that soul has gathered from all those lifetimes because we are we are powerful yes and we are so much more than our education and our programming and our culture has mm -hmm. defined us it's time that we wake up mm -hmm. to the infinite sense of self that is knocking on our doors mm -hmm. and, and telling us Yes, there's more to your mind and your body and your intelligence than you could ever imagine. And it's not stuff. <laughs> not stuck. Not stuff. It's not stuff. It's not the car. It's not the house. It's not the clothes. Right. None of it matters. I, I wish I could get that across to people because, and the biggest thing, and I want to say this before we go to commercial break, mm -hmm. what we do here makes a difference. I think it does. I think I it know does. it does. Thank you. I'm telling you, it, it makes it a does. big difference because 
it's it's a vital aspect of of creation itself what we do here what we create what we're we little think. creators yeah we yeah. are creating creators yeah. emulating creation yes that's our job as incarnate we're in this body to emulate the greater possibilities of what's out there so we you know in the 1900s they said the universe was a lifeless sort of thing and and there's a freud developed the death wish because he says things want to return to its original state so life since it was an accident of creation wants to return to lifelessness mm -hmm. but if we take that same understanding and say maybe we're descending from a greater creation mm -hmm. and that's our real mission that we want to return to the greater mind that's exactly that, right and as creators ourselves as emulations of creation we're here to create we're here to make art we're here to make joy and happiness and and feel that's our destiny that's what we're here that it doesn't matter what plan or what you're here we're here to make known the unknown which means we add more to creation right. as creators right that's hey, we gotta destiny. go to commercial break thanks but uh, i want to talk more about this when we come back you guys i'm here today with alan steinfeld his book is called making contact this is nancy Earl. this is high road to humanity and we will be right back Hi, this is Nancy Earl, and this is High Road to Humanity, and I'm so excited I'm here today with Alan Steinfeld, and I just want to say something. You were talking about um, the consciousness and raising and what we're here for, and I'll, I want to just kind of get out my thought on this. Yeah. I could probably talk to you for a couple hours on this whole subject, yeah. but, but the thing is, I believe that we come down here to learn. This is really what I believe, and like I said before, you know, we need to be kind to each other. We need to experience, yes, um, experience our feelings and our emotions, yes. But the idea really is, in my mind, is that we do the best what we can while we're here so that we can go back to the creator. I think we're trying to raise our vibration high enough to go back. And if we can't, and the, and the people who are doing these evil, nasty things here on earth are people who just reincarnate over and over and over and over into the same families because they don't want to try right. to go back. I don't think it's just about going back. I think, it's, think? Evo it's evolving creation. So we came from the infinite and we're here right. in this limited form, but right. we're here to add to creation. Okay. Yes. By being creators, you know, by by doing this show or by writing a song or making a movie. I think that's our destiny as human beings is to add to creation. So we can create heaven on earth. Yes. So, and, and so we can feel we're here to feel what it is to be human, but to also have new emotions, to experience something we've never had before. That's mm -hmm. the destiny of incarnation. In my opinion, mm -hmm. we're here to, add feeling and joy and excitement and that's what um in the book this guy daryl anka channels this being bashar he says we're here to follow our excitement every moment of the day because our excitement will take us into new uncharted territories and when we're there we give back to others you mm -hmm. know when someone writes a song and maybe you're feeling depressed and you listen to the song you start to realize what you're feeling. And so we're all here to share those feelings and those inspirations so we can expand humanity. Right. That's just on the human scale. And then right. we're about to meet the others. We're about to go into an even higher level of expansion as we realize there's more to creation than what our limited mind has or, and, and education has told us. We're here to wake up to a whole other level of reality. That's what making contact is. It's making contact with ourselves, the mm -hmm. earth and the unknown. We're mm -hmm. about to enter a new phase of human civilization that will give us, will add to creation in an exponential way than we've ever have known before. That's my I feeling. think it's, yeah, no, I think you're right on. I really do, I think. But what I think is the more of us that wake up and we're examples, like we go out into the world and people see our joy and they see our light and they feel our vibration. And then that vibration emanates out. This is what I think. It and the more of us- And inspires yeah. them to emanate. Yes. Yeah, and like- 
Yes, and to spread that joy and that possibility and mm-hmm. that and that creative I think it really I think we're really here to be creative, you know. Okay. I mean, of mm-hmm. course, we're here to have relationships and families and all those things, but those are side um, jobs in a sense for the main purpose of adding to creation, adding yeah. to it. Yeah. yeah. And I just want to say that everybody wakes up on their own time. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because there's a lot of people who are in families and maybe you woke up and your part of your family didn't, and they don't understand you. And there's a conflict, let it go, walk away because people, everybody's different. We're on our own paths and everybody is not going to wake up at the same time. It's going to be a gradual thing. Right. So don't judge. Exactly, because we were unawakened. And I've also, there's more to awaken to what we think is maybe awakened now. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll wake up tomorrow and say, oh, really? There's so much more that I never considered before. So this is a process. Mm-hmm. We're all in a process. Everyone, yes, I try not to judge other people who are kind of more dense and, you know, living in limitation. I mean, you know, well, I have to look at my judgments. I don't want to be judged. Yes. No one's, I don't, I don't want to be judged and I don't want to, I mean, if you're judging someone, someone's going to be judging you. That's you how it works. You betcha. So if you can look at everyone and say they are on their own path, mm-hmm. whatever that is. Mm-hmm. And that is what, even if they're doing things that may not be nice, it doesn't mean you have to be around it, mm-hmm. but it's like they're at a certain level of evolution. And that's the lessons they need to learn in this life because they want to evolve. Everyone's here to evolve. Whether they're in those um, families that you mentioned before that are just stuck in that kind of Mm -hmm. corporate mentality, that's their path of evolution. It may not be pleasant. The people are making nuclear bombs and creating wars. It doesn't mean we have to put up with it. If it's in Mm -hmm. our reality, we are here to change it. But it doesn't mean we're here to judge those people as less than human. Well, there's a difference between judging and standing up. Yeah. No, and yes. yeah, I think we need to stand up right now. And this is what I believe. I believe we really need to stand up for each other and for humanity. So a lot of things are being done right now that aren't cool. And people need to pay attention to what's happening because we need to stand up for ourselves and for each other. And, and it is an awakening where we need to stand up. We can't just sit back and think somebody else is going to do it. That's right. The more awareness we, we have, the more information we have, the more mm-hmm. clear we can understand the reality around us and people's motivations, what's really going on. And some people say, well, the UFO thing is just a distraction. I don't mm-hmm. think it's a distraction. I think mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a leap in evolution. I think we are here. And it, just by seeing something unusual in the sky, it expands your mind. And that expansion goes into into greater inventiveness. It, you start to consider more things when you're faced with some unknown realities in a good way. You know, we're- Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the book, um, when you say that, it makes me think in the book, somebody wrote that um, they're putting lights on their crafts, like they want us to see them, like, hello, we're here. Yeah, exactly. And so that was really interesting. You know, they want to be seen. They want us to wake up and see them. They want us to wake up, but they're not like landing on the White House lawn because they don't want it all to happen at once. There's people who couldn't take that. So they're coming and going. And that's what Grant Cameron says. You don't think they need lights to travel across the universe. No, they're not like. But I I don't know about that. I mean, I I put a lot of opinions in that book that I don't necessarily agree with Mm -hmm. or disagree with. I'm just I'm just a student of the phenomena. But What's so fascinating is that that there is no answer at this moment to what's going on. Right. And that's why I've, I've put so much energy into discovering, putting together my own pieces of the puzzle, because the world is about to change and nobody knows the direction it's changing in. Mm-hmm. Yes, if you have faith and belief in yourself, that's one aspect of the interior world, but the exterior world and relation to it is, is shifting into some new realities. Mm-hmm. And it hasn't taken form yet. We are in the unformed, which is really some of the most exciting place to be because there's nothing we can predict that will happen. At, I mean, the world can take any turn. And that's exciting. Mm-hmm. People only project the, what they know onto the unknown. I say the unknown is full of wonder and possibility. Things we have yet to even think about 
that's what I'm looking for. The next adventure mm -hmm. of discovery. That's, okay. that's exciting for me. We're about to discover a new cosmology, which means a new understanding of creation itself. Mm -hmm. You write about so many interesting things in here. You talk about, well, the moon, uh, they say it's hollow. You guys will have yes. to check this out. I'm not going to tell everything. Um, he talked about crop circles and why they, yeah, and all of that. I mean, there's just a lot of information. Well, you know, the moon rings when it's when it's struck by a meteor. There is something, and isn't it? I always thought this was the weirdest thing that the moon and the sun are exactly the same size relatively when seen from Earth. Right. You know, of course, there's the the sun is what a million miles across, and the moon's very tiny. But in the position that we're seeing it. How could it line up so perfectly? That is that not somebody who put the moon in the perfect place to also clean the oceans with the tides? And you know, if it's pulling on the oceans, it's pulling on the atmosphere too mm -hmm. to create more weather patterns. To create, there's so much that the moon does that I think sustains life on Earth. It affects uh, us energetically. It affects us, but it sustains life itself. You know, so. I think the moon is an artificial satellite that was pulled into place by alien civilizations uh, and put in the right spot mm -hmm. in our in our you know Earth's uh, orbit that will um, balance us. So there's so many more mysteries to creation than than science is even willing to acknowledge. They don't know how stars are made. They have no idea. Some people say stars are actually emanations from other dimensions that come and burst into this dimension. I mean, they, yeah. they science always likes to say it knows even when it doesn't know. Like that's why they call things junk DNA. Do you think nature creates junk DNA? No. Nope. It's insane. <laughs> yeah. Because they're you. not willing to say, look, we don't know. We can't explain it. This is why the, the, the newspapers and the scientists are saying, well, they're, they can't be alien craft because if it was, we'd know about it. But it's just, it's just a manifestation of their own ignorance. And it's yeah, okay I agree. To say you don't know. Right. Well, if you watch my show with Gene Decode, he talks about um, that we do have a space force and that we have gone way out there and that we've been doing this since the 1800s, which blows my mind. So you'll have to check that out. And I, I believe that. And I think I, really, I don't believe it. Nancy. You don't believe it. <laughs> I don't. I think we probably do have a lot more advanced technology, but yeah. I don't think we've been going any to Mars. I don't think we have, a, I mean, I know even Linda Moulton House says this, I think there was bases on Mars, human yeah. bases. I think there yeah. are, are alien bases on Mars. I think there are aliens that exist inside the earth. And I think maybe they have come down and taken humans out there, mm -hmm. but I don't think the government is that smart. You don't think I, they're that far advanced? I don't. I mean, yeah, Richard Dolan talks about a breakaway civilization. I asked Richard, well, what's the evidence of a breakaway civilization? He couldn't tell me. I mean, maybe he just didn't want to say maybe it publicly, say, yeah. but I don't see any evidence of what you're saying that guy said. I'm not a skeptic. No, I no. just haven't seen evidence. I would okay. like to know that we've been out in space since the 1800s. Well, I'd like to see that. Yeah, I would too. I would too. But well, I don't, I, that's why I don't take everyone's word for it. I put it out there in this book because these are people I respect their right. investigations, but it doesn't right. necessarily mean I believe it all. Right, right. You gotta be open-minded. Right. You gotta be open-minded, but take everything with a grain of salt, right? Something like that. That's my perspective. Okay. Yeah. You can tell me you've been to Mars. I would believe you, but it doesn't mean it was true. I mean, okay. I believe that you believe it. Right. And I like, yes, I said I had to think that was an alien abduction. I can't expect people to believe it, but that's right. been my experience. I have to believe in my experience, you know. Like Travis Walton, you know who Travis Walton is? From, no, no. He's the guy that Fire in the Sky was made about. He was he was a lumberjack. He this UFO landed in the forest. He ran towards it. He was blasted, and his crew left him there on the ground. There was a movie tra Fire in the Sky, and he oh, was wow. on a spaceship for five days, and he was brought back. He thinks they revived him. They think there's like an accidental blast killed him, and he was revived. And people doubted his story, but there were search parties. I don't doubt Travis Walton had that experience. It wasn't mm -hmm. my experience, but 
he was missing for five days and there were hundreds of people looking for him. Mm-hmm. And he comes back and he says, yeah, he had this weird time on top of a spaceship. So there are people who've had these experiences and I know. I'm I'm not skeptical of people's stories, but I'm skeptical of some of the far out ideas yeah. because when you when people say those things, it might be true. I'm not saying it's not true. I'm just saying I want to see some proof. But I've seen UFOs. I know there's stuff out there. I know we're being visited. I've had right. it, it happens in these altered states in dream in dream time. I've had these encounters and they weren't just dreams because you forget your dreams usually when you wake up in the morning these are dreams i've never forgotten i write about that in the book so Mm -hmm. i'm sure you've had some way out dreams right yeah yeah (laughs) i've had some way out uh, realities actually (laughs) oh i want to hear about that yes i wouldn't get out of here for today what would you like to leave the audience with i mean i have to say how do they get in touch with you talk about your show give them your information okay well i've been doing a youtube channel since youtube began in like 2006 so uh, i have thousands of programs with interviews by people experiencers and i want to say experiences are the key even if i'm not sure I know people are having experiences that are beyond what I can comprehend. And I love interviewing people like that to stretch Mm -hmm. my mind into what's possible. So my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash new realities. And that's sort of been the theme to my research is new realities. How do we understand reality differently? How do we cognize the world with new perceptions? So this is why I'm so interested in what the UFO phenomena does to our mind. It stretches us Mm -hmm. beyond the boundaries of belief. And this is not about belief. This is about investigation. If there are UFOs out there and the U.S. government is saying it, let's have an open discussion in Congress, on television. Let's not laugh at this. There's Mm -hmm. something going on that's beyond the limited human being. But of course, like you say, Nancy, we're not limited. There's so much more to us. So I want to leave people with hope and possibilities and an open mind to investigate the unknown because the unknown is beckoning us to give more to creation. We're here to make known the unknown, which is how we expand possibilities. So read this book with an open mind And just take it all in before you judge it as impossible or not possible and see if your mind gets stretched to new reality. So you can find the book on Amazon. That's new reality. It's the book is called making contact, preparing for the new realities of extraterrestrial existence. You can find it at your local bookstore, ask at your local bookstore, because I think the more people that read this book, the more prepared will be those beings. Some people Two people could be standing on the ground, two people and looking at the sky. One person will see something, the other person will not. Because yeah. they haven't been open to or that. awakened to these possibilities. So keep an open mind, look towards the stars, and know that you're a part of forever. That's because awesome. we are. That's awesome. Hey, you guys, uh, if you guys want a psychic reading, go to my website, nancyyearout.com. You can go to my calendar and you can book there. Alan, thanks for coming on the show. Yes, get the book, write a review, and um, you could email me at newrealities at earthlink.net. Thank you so much, Nancy. That's fantastic. Thank you. Hey, you guys, it's High Root to Humanity. This is Nancy Yearout, and we will see you next time. Everybody take care. Bye-bye. Connect the dots and keep the motion. Can achieve your goal. Let's hit the high road. Hey, you guys, join me next week on The High Road for more stories filled with wisdom, love, and hope for our future. Have a fabulous week and know that by staying on The High Road, you will make it to your destination. Visit my website, nancyyearout.com, where you can book a private session to learn how to tap into your own abilities. And check out my YouTube channel. It's Nancy Yearout's High Road to Humanity. you can achieve your goal, let's hit the high.